Welcome to AETCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today we will discuss about hyponatremia. Hyponatremia is defined as sodium level less than 135 milliequivalents per liter. Okay. A true hyponatremia is characterized, characterized by hypoosmolality. Okay. So we will discuss about true hyponatremia. What are the reasons for true hyponatremia? So hyponatremia is always uh, you have to compare with the body water. Okay. So hyponatremia with normal extracellular fluid volume, hyponatremia with increased extracellular fluid volume, hyponatremia with low ECF. Okay. So three things, hyponatremia with normal water, hyponatremia with increased water, hyponatremia with low water. Okay. Hyponatremia with normal water is mainly due to SIADH, okay. hypothyroidism, glucocorticoid deficiency, post-operative pain, psychological polydipsia. So main thing is syndrome of inappropriate ADH secretion. That is the main cause for hyponatremia with normal ECF volume. Okay. So patient will not have edema. So another type of patient is hyponatremia with increased water, hypervolemia. Okay. That, that is otherwise called as dilutional hyponatremia. Any failure, cardiac failure, liver failure, nephrotic syndrome, renal failure, all these conditions, body will accumulate large amount of fluid. Because of the large fluid, there is a relative low sodium. Okay, this is called as dilutional hyponatremia. Last one is hyponatremia with low ECF. Both water loss and sodium loss will produce uh, hyponatremia with low ECF. Okay, renal loss can be there due to diuretics, osmotic diuresis, salt wasting nephropathy, extra renal causes like vomiting, diarrhea, peritonitis, all these things can produce low uh, extracellular fluid. Okay, so hyponatremia are three types hyponatremia with normal water, high water, low water. Okay, now one word about uh, pseudo hyponatremia. Okay. So, pseudo hyponatremia is defined as hyponatremia with normal osmolality or high osmolality. Normal osmolality is due to hyperlipidemia, hyperproteinemia. High osmolality is mainly due to hyperglycemia or mannitol treatment. Okay. So, whenever you have a hyponatremia, you should have hypo, uh, hypoosmolality. If it is normal or high, it is a pseudo hyponatremia. Then syndrome of inappropriate ADH is SIADH. That is persistent ADH release and water uh, salt uh, water retention can be uh, occur in the body that will produce uh, uh, hyponatremia. Okay. Now SIADH diagnostic criteria is mainly uh, this is uh, 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 hyponatremia with normal water. Patients are typically normal volumic. Plasma sodium concentration is low, so, uh, less than 135. Uh, plasma osmolality is less than 270 millimoles per kg and uh, inappropriately concentrated urine. Urine osmolality is elevated more than 100 millimole per kg. Urine sodium is more than 40 milliequivalents per liter. Okay. So these are the diagnostic criteria for uh, SIADH. You should rule out other causes for hyponatremia to make a, it's a diagnosis of exclusion. Okay. So we have three types of hyponatremia: dilutional hyponatremia, large hyponatremia, large amount of body water, normal volume that is SIADH. Decreased volume either because of the renal loss of water or because of the extra renal like vomiting, diarrhea, all these things. Okay, so three types of hyp hyponatremia. Now we will see the clinical features of hyponatremia. Whenever there is hyponatremia, it mainly affects your brain cells. Okay, so mild hyponatremia clinical findings are hyper anorexia, headache, nausea, vomiting, lethargy. Moderate hyponatremia can be uh, can produce personality changes, muscle cramps muscle weakness, confusion, ataxia. Severe hyponatremia will produce drowsiness, diminished reflexes, convulsions, coma and death. Depending on the severity, the patient's neurological findings may increase and it is more severe in acute hyponatremia than chronic hyponatremia. So acute hyponatremia present uh, with severe symptoms, chronic less symptoms. And it is more severe in elderly individuals than younger individuals. Okay. So even if there is a mild hyponatremia in elderly individual, that can produce severe symptoms. Okay. Now we'll see what are the basic investigation done in a case of hyponatremia. You can do first investigation is always serum osmolality. Osmolality has to be low for a true hyponatremia. Normal or elevated osmolality rules out true hyponatremia. It's a pseudo hyponatremia. Okay. 
okay second investigation is urine osmolality okay so you can do a urine osmolality and whenever the, there is a uh, hyponatremia uh, uh, or hypo osmolality uh, response is to excrete maximally diluted urine urine osmolality should be less than 110 milli, milli osmolal per liter okay if the urine osmolality is less than 110 milli osmolar liter, there is no other uh, complications. You have to think about primary polydipsia. Patient has taken large amount of water and is excreting uh, some amount of water through the uh, kidneys. Okay. If the urine osmolality more than 100 milli osmolar per kg, hyponatremia with impaired water excretion is the diagnosis. So, urine osmolality should be done. Then you can you have to do a urine sodium level. So, serum sodium is low. You have a true hyponatremia. The second investigation, third investigation will be urine sodium. Okay. So, whenever there is hyponatremia, kidney will try to retain sodium. Okay. But whenever the patient is having salt wasting problem, the urine sodium will be high. If the urine sodium is more than 20 milligrams per liter, you should suspect SIADH. SIADH it will be slightly higher, more than 40 it come. Salt wasting nephropathy, diuretic therapy, hypoaldosteronism. These are the conditions where you get a higher urine sodium output. If the urine sodium is low, then the sodium loss is not through the kidney. It is extra renal sodium loss. It can be due to diarrhea or vomiting okay so we have understood that when the patient come to emergency room uh, hyponatremia is there look for the clinical findings like neurological problem always check the uh, serum uh, osmolality a true uh, I, true hyponatremia you have a low osmolality then you look for the urine sodium a urine sodium is elevated in uh, renal loss of sodium urine salt is urine sodium is less in the extra renal cause okay now steps of management once the patient is taken inside the emergency room you have to take care is airway breathing circulation there may not be major problem in the airway and breathing circulation because of hyponatremia but many patients can have loss of consciousness comatose state convulsions uh, rapid breathing so many abnormal uh, metabolic problems can occur in a hyponatremia okay so whenever you uh, see the patient take care is airway breathing circulation look for the uh, sodium level look for in other investigation then start correcting the problem okay so there are two steps in correcting the hyponatremia correction of water imbalance correction of salt imbalance we'll see how to correct the water imbalance we have seen there are uh, uh, three conditions water excess water normal and low water all can have hyponatremia so water excess and water normal conditions you restrict water that is the main treatment water loss you add water with salt okay correction of water and fluid ba uh, imbalance like water restriction is required in SIADH renal failure cardiac failure liver failure and polydipsia all these conditions you have to restrict the water to 1.1 to 1.2 liters okay then you can go for if the patient is uh, not uh, improving with your correction of water in SIADH of uh, SIADH especially SIADH and some cases of uh, uh, fluid excess then then only you should go for uh, sodium correction okay if the patient is having uh, hyponatremia without volume excess you can treat the patient with IV fluids okay IV fluids main uh, IV fluids we use in the clinical practice is normal saline the uh, one liter normal saline contains 154 milli equivalents of sodium and three percent normal saline one liter contains 512 milli equivalent sodium okay you can calculate the sodium deficit by uh, uh, you do uh, desired sodium plus uh, uh, sorry desired sodium minus serum sodium into 0.6 into body weight in kg that that formula will give you uh, the amount of sodium uh, which is required for the patient okay so normal saline is the patient uh, normal saline is the best solution for a patient who is having salt and water depletion somebody is having dehydration hyponatremia is there due to vomiting diarrhea you have to give normal saline okay so uh, normal saline uh, contains both water and salt okay it corrects the hyponatremia it approximately 1 milligram per liter can be corrected with this normal saline so normal saline should be given in a patient who is having both hyponatremia and hypovolemia okay three percent saline is reserved for patients who is having severely sick severe symptoms or you are not able to correct it with your normal saline the it is not getting corrected one liter of three percent saline will provide 
513 milli equivalents of uh, sodium. That means you get uh, normally 100 ml packets of normal saline. 100 ml is equal to 51.3 milli equivalents of sodium in that. Okay. So, I will tell you an example how to correct uh, with 3% saline. For example, 50 year old male patient, 70 kg with a serum sodium of 110, 110 milli equivalents per liter, he is slightly drowsy. Okay and he is not fluid overloaded okay how to manage how to calculate his sodium deficit okay so desired sodium should be calculated for next 24 hours you should never uh, correct the sodium or you should not over correct the sodium so maximum correction will be 8 to 12 milli equivalents per day so the, this patient's sodium is 110 i want to make it 122 by tomorrow uh, same time okay so sodium deficit should be calculated in for first 24 hour 122 minus 110 i'll get 12 okay into 0 0.6 into 70 okay the total thing will be 12 into 42 i need to correct 504 milli equivalents of sodium for that 24 hours 100 ml of 3 percent saline that is one bottle it contains 51.3 milli equivalents of sodium i want to correct 500, 504 so this patient may require 10 bottles of 3 percent saline in 24 hours but some patients may not require some like patients who is having chronic hyponatremia or patients who is elderly will not correct this much fast we may correct only 8 milli equivalents or 6 milli equivalents per day so this much is not required i, I just gave an example how to correct the uh, sodium deficit by 3 percent saline okay uh, sodium infusion should not be given very fast every uh, four to six hours you have to check the serum sodium level if it is more than eight to, t to 12 milli equivalents correction in 24 hours immediately stop the uh, uh, infusion if you give very fast or if you give over correct there are there is a problem which can occur it is called as osmotic demyelination syndrome or central pondine myelinolysis okay there will be myelinolysis either in the pons or extra pondine areas okay now if the patient is having hyponatremia with seizure you have to correct little fast 100 ml 3 percent saline iv bolus should be given very fast uh, that can raise the serum sodium by 1.5 milli equivalents per liter in men, men and 2, 2 milli equivalents per liter in female okay so it should be given very fast 100 ml bolus can be given very fast it can be repeated if the patient symptoms are not improving okay now one word about waptans waptans are mainly used in patients who is having loss of sodium through kidneys like SIADH okay it's a vasopressin receptor antagonist there are two drugs tolvaptan and conivaptan tolvaptan is tablet oral tablets can be started 15 milligram od is the dose uh, remember it should not be uh, it should be used with caution in liver disease okay otherwise 15 milligram od up to 60 milligram once daily you can give but uh, every uh, like second week you have to check the liver function test and it should not be indefinitely continued once the patient is stabilized you should immediately stop it conivaptan is a injectable drug uh, 20 milligram iv is administered over uh, 30 minutes followed by continuous infusion of 20 milligram per day over next 24 hours maximum uh, four days you can continue so these are the drugs should be used in SADs. so we have discussed uh, may uh, like uh, hyponatremia work, uh, clinical findings are mainly neurological investigations are do a uh, uh, serum osmolality urine osmolality urine sodium and urine uh, urine osmolality then once the patient is uh, you understand what is the fluid status of the patient if the patient is fluid excess try to remove fluid restrict the water and give lasics to remove amount of, some amount of fluid if the patient is having hypovolemia try to correct with normal saline that contains both water and salt and you can even give oral salt for the, that patient if the patient is symptomatically bad you can go for 3% saline Vaptans are a very good drug in SIDH thank you